Hillsboro Television News Breaks, connecting you to county events. Creator and loving God, God of compassion and strength, we give you thanks for this republic, which we call one nation under God. We are here to honor and give thanks to you for all veterans, men and women who have loyally served in the varied uniforms of these United States in many wars, conflicts, and in peacetime. Thank you for their patriotism, courage and heroism, loyalty, hard work, and the sacrifices they and their families made in their time of service. Bless them with your wholeness. Heal their seen and unseen wounds. Comfort their hearts and grant them your peace. We honor them for the freedoms we enjoy because of their service. We pray for all who are serving now, especially those in harm's way. Protect them in the continual struggle to preserve our freedoms. Bring them home safely. Bless their families through the hardships they face, the struggles they endure. Lord, fill with your loving presence, your comfort and peace, these families gathered here and all who this day and every day mourn the loss of husband or wife, father or mother, son or daughter, brother and sister. As you are their strength and courage, their shield and protector, may they know our profound gratitude. And oh God, until that day when swords are beaten into plowshares and spears into pruning hooks, when nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. Guide the hearts, minds, and work of our leaders and the leaders of our enemies to seek justice and peace, ways of living together in harmony and mutual understanding. Blessed are you, almighty God. Amen. Army Captain James Edomowski. Army Staff Sergeant Kevin Atkins. Army Specialist Mark Anderson. Marine Sergeant Daniel Angus. Marine Lance Corporal Andrew Abeles. Army Private Roberto Baez. Army Private First Class, Brandon Bob. Army Private First Class, Joshua Brown. Marine Lance Corporal, Brian Boosley. Army Staff Sergeant, Corey Clark Sr. Army Staff Sergeant, David Croft, Jr. Army Private First Class Paul Kazupe II. Army Staff Sergeant Wilbur Davis. Army First Lieutenant Dimitri Del Costello. Army Private First Class Mark Delgado. Army Specialist Michael M. Air Force Major Raymond Estelle II. Army Sergeant First Class Jason Fabrizi. Marine Lance Corporal Ronald Freeman. Army Staff Sergeant Joseph Furis III. Navy, Navy Petty Officer Third Class Ronald Gender. Army Corporal Aaron Greiner. Army Staff Sergeant First Class David Herringes. Army Private First Class David Hess. Army Corporal Stanley Lipinski. Army First Lieutenant Ivan Lekowicz. Army Sergeant Michael Led Miller. Army Specialist Eric Lambiki. Army Sergeant Brian Lucky. Army Specialist Christophe Marquise. 
Army Sergeant Benjamin Mejia. DEA Special Agent Chad Michael. Army Private Second Class Jody Misseldine. Army Private First Class Cody Orr. Marine Lance Corporal Eric Palmisano. Marine Lance Corporal James Phillips. Army Staff Sergeant Michael Quinn. Army Sergeant Adam Ray. Air Force Airman First Class Michael Lamar Rio. Army Corporal John Rivero. Army Specialist Alexis Raymond Cruz. Marine Lance Corporal Nathaniel Schultz. Army Staff Sergeant Ricardo Sejia. Army Staff Sergeant Matthew Sitton. Marine Lance Corporal Antonio Sled. Army First Lieutenant Kevin Smith. Army Sergeant First Class Paul Smith. Air Force Captain James Steele. Army Major David Taylor Jr. Army Staff Sergeant Michael Thomas. Army Specialist Samuel Valdez. Army Private Jalfred Vacierno. Army Sergeant Antoine Walker. Marine Lance Corporal Kevin Waringi. Marine Lance Corporal Nicholas Wilt. Army Lieutenant Colonel Peter Winston. Well, good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us for the 2013 Veterans Day celebration. Uh, it's my honor uh, to be here during this very special ceremony as we pay tribute to all of our veterans, those who currently serve in the armed forces, and especially those who made the ultimate sacrifice preserving our freedoms and liberties. I do want to give a special thank you to USAA and all of our sponsors for making this event possible and also to the Tampa Chamber, and especially Captain Bob Sila for all of their hard work uh, in organizing today's event. Uh, it is my honor to introduce to you uh, today's keynote speaker. Major General Carl R. Horst retired from the United States Army on October 1st, 2013, after more than 40 years of enlisted and commissioned service. During that time, he had the privilege to lead soldiers at every level of the military, at home and around the world, in peacetime and in combat. Immediately prior to his retirement, he served as Chief of Staff for United States Central Command at McDill Air Force Base, Tampa. Complementing his command experience, Carl had staff responsibilities at several senior levels, Headquarters, Department of the Army, NATO Military Headquarters, U.S. European Command, U.S. Joint Forces Command, and finally, at U.S. Central Command. Carl received a bachelor's degree from the United States Military Academy and a master's degree in public administration from Shippensburg University of Pennsylvania. He also attended the University of North Carolina Kennan Flagler Business School Executive Development Program. He has lectured extensively on leadership as well as the contemporary geopolitical and religious challenges in the Middle East and the Levant. Thus far, Carl has visited six continents and 65 different countries throughout the world and is conversational in both French and German languages. During his time on active duty, Carl received numerous awards and decorations, including the Distinguished Service Medal, the Defense Superior Service Medal, the Legion of Merit, and the Bronze Star Medal. He earned the Combat Infantry Badge and the Combat Action Badge, the Master Parachutist Badge, the Army Ranger Tab, and Parachutist Badges from five different countries. Carl's professional affiliations and lifetime memberships include USMA Association of Graduates, Military Officers Association of America, Vietnam Veterans of America, Association of the United States Army, 82nd Airborne Division Association, and Society of the 3rd Infantry Divi Division. 
Carl resides in Tampa, Florida with his wife of more than 31 years, Nancy. They have three grown children, Caitlin, 28, Paul, 24, and Megan, 22. Please join me in welcoming Major General Carl R. Horst. As a student of history, I believe it is important to put significant events, national holidays, into their historical context. How they came about and what was their intent and meaning. As the former commander of the Military District of Washington, I had a role in hosting most all of the national, uh, major national holidays in Washington for several years. And I was constantly amazed at the lack of understanding and the lack of context of our national holidays and where they came from. And this lack of understanding and lack of context occurred at the highest levels of our government, which I found disappointing. Major hostilities of World War I were formally ended on the 11th hour, the 11th day, and the 11th month of 1918 when the armistice went into effect. President Woodrow Wilson proclaimed Armistice Day November 11th, 1919. In proclaiming the holiday, he said, and I quote, to us in America, the reflections of Armistice Day will be filled with the solemn pride in the heroism of those who died in this country's service and with gratitude for the victory, both because of the thing from which it has freed us and because of the opportunity that it has given America to show her sympathy with peace and justice in the Council of Nations, end quote. And the Council of Nations that President Wilson was addressing was the Paris Peace Conference that brought about the Treaty of Versailles, and he addressed the League of Nations, the precursor to the United Nations. Following the end of World War II, members of Congress who were veterans, which I find is a novel concept, felt the service of World War II veterans should be recognized, and the particulars of the armistice of 1918 were overshadowed by the events of World War II. And so Congress amended the act creating Armistice Day on the 1st of June, 1954, replacing the words armistice with veterans. And it has been known as Veterans Day ever since. According to the latest data, there are nearly 22 million veterans in the United States. 22 million veterans. We recently uh, mourn the loss of the last living World War I veteran, and we now focus our attention on the greatest generation, those veterans of the Second World War, and Korea, and Vietnam, and the conflicts that we are in today. On a personal note, I will tell you that I'm constantly overwhelmed by well-wishing patriotic Americans who thank me for my service. I'm humbled by the Bayshore Patriots, who on every Friday stand at the corner of Bayshore and Bay to Bay and show their appreciation and respect to veterans on their way home from MacDill Air Force Base. Rain or shine, sleet, bad weather, two or 20, every Friday they're out there paying their respect. As an able-bodied American veteran, still capable of being part of the workforce, I appreciate kind words. Unfortunately, many of my colleagues are much, le much less fortunate and require more than just a thank you. Many veterans are completing their service, either or completing their service either by their own choice or by someone else's choice, and they are encountering a very difficult and uncertain job market out there. We hear a lot of rhetoric today coming from Washington about taking care of veterans and about hiring veterans. And the inconvenient truth is rhetoric is just words, not necessarily a call to action. There is some good news and that the real difference is made locally. Here in Tampa, led by organizations like the Greater Tampa Chamber of Commerce, by the, uh, the uh, Hillsborough uh, County Board, by appreciative and gracious employers who seek former military members as employees. What former men and women in uniform bring to business is a set of values. They bring a work ethic and they can be an immediate asset to any business. And my message is hire veterans. We're a good bet. Again, 
to echo the words of President Lincoln, to care for him who shall have borne the battle and for his widow and for his orphan. Ladies and gentlemen, we all have a responsibility, all of us. I'm proud to say that I've had the distinct honor and privilege to, to spend my entire adult life and more than two thirds of my natural life as an American soldier. I've been asked many times, would I do it again? And the simple answer is, yes, I would. But I can no longer serve on active duty, and so my life has moved another direction, yet I remain a staunch advocate and vocal supporter of men and women in uniform and veterans and law enforcement officers and firefighters and emergency first responders. Nancy and I are proud to call Tampa our home and to be part of this wonderfully patriotic and appreciative community. And let me assure you, it is not an accident that we chose to retire here in Tampa. May God bless you. May God bless this wonderful community. May God bless our veterans. May God bless America. Thank you. The General talked a lot about the wounded, the injured, and I wanted to tell you a little about what we're doing here in Tampa. Operation Helping Hand Tampa has been in existence since 2004. And the reason I'm bringing this up is I know of the, some of the organizations he talked about that take almost 50% of what they collect in donations for salaries, whatever. Operation Helping Hand, this is your Tampa group does not take any salaries. We have a committee of about 25, mostly retired, mostly former military and some civilian that conduct we, uh, monthly lunch and dinners for the wounded, the injured. We've done this for nine straight years. We take no salaries. And uh, we always tell our treasurer, if you go over 3.5%, that's too much. So what I'm saying is 95% of any contributions coming in goes to the wounded, the injured. And again, Operation Helping Hand has no salaries. So we're proud of what we're doing and we're gonna continue. And you know, the number of wounded injured, a couple weeks ago, I met with the director of the hospital and she said that, and I thought at that time that we were getting a declining in the number of wounded injured coming into Tampa, to the James A. Haley Hospital. Well, she got on her computer and showed me not true. There's more coming in than she's had in a while. Her count was over 20 and I thought there was about seven. Right now there's over 20 patients right here in Tampa at the James A. Haley Hospital, wounded, injured. So if you think this thing is declining, slowing down, you're wrong. They're still coming in and we'll do everything we can to help them. But I thank the general and Commissioner Hagan for being with us today and thank you for your remarks, General. And he mentioned about Veterans Day and I'm going to reemphasize what he said. Veterans Day is honored every November 11th to mark the signing of the armistice between United States and Germany at uh, November 11th, 1918, ending the First World War. It was known as Armistice Day, now it's Veterans Day, it's our day. Today's event was held early so the veterans can celebrate the 11th, which is Monday, with their families and friends. If you see a veteran, and there are plenty of them here, please thank them for everything they've done. For more news and information, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, or watch us on YouTube. This program was brought to you by Hillsborough Television. Visit our website at htvonline.org.